Have you ever seen any of these four bottles on the shelf at your liquor store? You've probably tried them. They're pretty popular. They've been around a long time. Have you ever wondered what they tasted like 40 years ago? Why don't you take a trip back in time and let's find out. Scotch for Dummy. Four guys on a Scotch journey to help you with your next Scotch purchase. And we're missing two. Minus two. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all right, man. We're 40 years ago. Uh, 40 we, years. We backed it up a little bit. Um, I have scored some bottles uh, that all range from the late 70s to early 80s. And I've hold, held on to them for a little while to uh, to do this video. And the, the reason, the, the, the whole purpose of this video is to really see how these scotches have changed in the last 40 years because even if the the um, the, ingre the mash bill if you will yeah. or the blending ingredient you know the, if they have the recipe it's still different we're talking about different casks we're talking about uh, different, different grains different weather different, different blenders different, completely different blenders um, you know you've got you've got a sample that you're you always want your uh, J and B to hit well that sample changes over time and oh, absolutely! These are going to be completely yeah. different. So we're going to we're going to do a quick run through on what we've got, and I've got a little information on them. I was able to dig, dig some some up, and believe me, I did make sure that I wasn't opening something that I was going to regret. You know, oh my gosh, I just opened something that That's was worth four thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite that much. Yeah. But so let me go through the lineup here. We've got a J and B. This is from the uh, eight, 1983 to 85 era, and I can tell because of the ATF stamp that was on the bottle. Um, we just opened it and we pre-poured it before mm -hmm. the show. Um, I saw it uh, on an auction for 11 pounds and I also saw it go for 150 USD. So, uh, you know, 40 year old J&B, uh, I guess there's a variety of, of price points on that. Um, this is a 12 year old Dewar's White. It says Ne Plus Ultra. Now we, we looked that up, it's Latin for what? Something like can't go beyond. There's it. nothing better. Nothing, nothing better. better. This Dewar's is from the 60s. Um, wow. And it is, uh, I found it for 130 euro on, on an auction site. So um, it's still out there. It's still available. And on the box, it says it cost $13.85 from um, a store that mm. was LCBO. The I, control board. Yeah, of, of somewhere. Who knows? Maybe from Canada. Because um, I think this came from, uh, from up north. Anyway, like the, uh, the Glenfiddich is, uh, it says pure malt. Now, this is the only one that's a little bit different. This is an eight-year-old Glenfiddich. Don't even make that anymore. Um, I found it cool because pure malt was the phrase used for single malt um, back then. So, <laughs> Time's um, yeah, this, cool. this is a 70s bottle. I found it for 65 pounds on an auction in, in 2016. So, And the last one is a Cutty Sark. And that is um, somewhere between 1977 and 82, I can tell by the tax stamp on it. And again, I found it on an, uh, one auction site for 150 USD and another auction site for 30 pounds. So, um, so what, what, what year is this again? 77 77 to 82. 82. So all of these average about 8, 1980, except for this one, it's probably older, in the 60s. Yeah, that's, that's safe to say. So, I mean, these... Okay. The, the whiskey's been sitting in these things for 40 years. And, all, to. and all of these bottles were unopened yes. when we opened them tonight. So these were these were, these don't have additional oxidation. They don't have any of that. But but you will see that the neck the neck has reduced. There there's well, they there's liquid now. Well we there's poured. yeah well there's there was liquid missing in these Absolutely. bottles when we opened them. So they had off gas to some extent. But over 40 years, what do you expect? I mean, there's not a perfect seal. But the thing is, all of these actually were screw top, so you're actually going to get a better seal with those screw tops than you would with a cork. So I think these are probably getting pretty well. That, that JB actually smells really fruity and, and sweet. I, I, I'm very surprised. It, it, it seems I'm sick and you're going, going, I can't and, believe that it smells. I, I expected know. this to really be a flop. Um, yeah, it's really nice. There's a cinnamon spice in it, too. It's nice. Um, they're all screw tops, so there's no corking in any of these bottles. But. Um, the nose on this They couldn't have been cork. The cork couldn't have degraded on us. Um, very surprised. The, the bottles are completely different, too. And, and you had made an observation on the Glenfiddich that I thought was really hilarious. You have a triangular bottle in a round can. If you look at the current Glenfiddich offerings, they come in a triangular 
can. Can. With a round, round bottle. bottle. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Whatever they so they kept their brand image fairly consistent with one triangular and one not. All right, so I'm getting it. Yeah, a little bit of pepper on there, but but it's it's really a pl very pleasant dram. There's nothing off putting on it. It's got some sweetness, some apples, some things like that. In very it that, much, you got that, it. That really is is very pleasant. A, a peppery finish on the on the mm -hmm. palate. Um, what was the ABV on this old guy? That one is forty percent, I believe. Oh no, that's oh, 43. 43. That's yeah. 43. So 43 percent. 43 percent ABV. I'm I'm very pleasantly surprised with the palate on on, on that JB and the nose. Let's I'm move on to that, that Dewar's. That Dewar's is kind of nice. It's some some mustiness to it. Did you set, smell this one already? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, very musty. Now that may be the bottle. That may whatever. But it, either way, it, it. I mean, it is a screw top, and that one hadn't lost as much because it was in a a, a box that. Get the light out. It smells buttery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this thing, <laughs> this thing's older than I am. It's been sitting in that bottle for as long as I've been alive. So, so that would have been, um, that would have been distilled in the fifties, because that's twelve years old. It's a twelve-year-old whiskey at that time. Wow, it's soft. I I didn't expect it to be. What's that water? So yeah, there's a little little sweetness to it. There's a little. It's not. It's kind of a funk, but it's not. So it's a, maybe a little sour. So this one and this one, the wow, the Doers and the Fittick both have age statements, by the way. So the JMB and the Cuddy. Yeah, are, they're, they're are all, and, and these are blended. Well, all three of these are blended. Right, blended Scotch. That does have a little bit of uh, like what I would consider like a spree bank funk to it. It's kind of a little, little sour, a little off, maybe probably a little, little smoke in it, old peat. Yeah, there's something in there that's a little bit off. Not, not, not disturbing. It's not off-putting. It's, it, it's just a little bit of a funk going on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a little water to cleanse my palate a little bit. Yeah. I think it's enjoyable as well. It is. It's a good. It's a good whiskey. Um, I mean, if they're serving this on a, a flight, I'll, I'll get it. Mm -hmm. You know, I just don't know if it's gonna how it's gonna hold up to, to a, a regular doors nowadays. Um, so try let's let's move on in the interest of time onto the Glenfiddich. So it's an eight year old. You'd expect it to be young and fresh. This is it's very malty. I mean, it it it, it does seem different in context and, and um, mouthfeel to the rest of them. Maybe it's psychological. But it does seem to have more body to it than these other ones. Um, it's it's not funky. It's it's got a nice malt character. It's not as bright and clean as the J and B. It's not like apple and those kind of things. But it's it's still pretty pleasant. Uh, it smells waxy. Mm -hmm. I, it's, I I get the definitely yeah. maltiness of it. But... malt character it does yeah it's a little bit it's heavier it's mm -hmm. it's a little more fortified I don't know if that means anything to anybody out there in virtual well, land, there, that's uh, 40 I think that this one is 46% ABV as well and this one was 40 so this was yeah. the weak one yeah. okay and this, that, these two are 46 so this is that's unusual that the the blended whiskeys are so the the Cuddy and the J&B were 46% ABV at that time and, and I don't believe they are anymore I think, we'll check. I think we're going to have to find yeah. out What do you got here, Cuddy Sark, huh? Cuddy Sark, from the late 70s and 80s. Ooh, hang on a second. Mm, that feels like a young scotch. It tastes, it tastes young. I guess there's a little bit of grain in there, that makes sense. Yeah, um, I was just gonna say, that's what I smell. <laughs> you smell a little bit of grain, yeah, that's fine. I mean, it makes sense, it's, it's, got, it's blended, so it's, it's what they're designing it to be. But it's not... Um, but amazingly, it, is still, it still has brightness and clean to it. It does. Really nice. it, it, it really does. You know, I mean, kind of part of me expects it to be flat because it's 40 years in a yeah, bottle, right? Yeah, not. This is, you would enjoy this fresh out of the bottle at 40 years after it was bottled. You want to check legs? Wow, that is surprisingly soft. <laughs> I mean, I want to say smooth. People beat you up. Oh, it's smooth. I, it, it is. It's very soft on the palate. It, there's no bite to that at all. 
There's no, there's no heat. It's just a. There's nothing. It just that, rolls down the palate smoothly. Yeah. So, so all of these are, are pleasant to drink. None of them have any edges that are like, I'm not sure I like that. Which we've done reviews of Jay being cutting before, and there were some edges that, that uh, I wasn't pleasant with before. Right. It did, it didn't, it didn't work for me. Um, well, you got to so, remember back then. I mean, very, very popular whiskeys, man. I mean, these dominated the whiskey market. Yes, they did. Um, even more so than, than the single oh, malts, right? I mean, these, pure malts weren't done at all. Right. This was the bomb. Everybody was drinking this, right? And actually, I can see why. Well, yeah. It's pretty good. It's, <laughs> right? it's pretty consistent. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's fast forward. Let's bring it back into 2019. Let's jump forward. But let's keep these and take these with us. And let's see what happens. We need, when a, we we need a fast up, forward button right now. When we put these up against real ones. Right. So fast forward. <laughs> We are <laughs> back, and look at all these bottles. I mean, this is like a whiskey lover's dream. Eight so bottles up there. We've got the equivalent, the new day equivalent of what we just went we through. So actually, I picked up three of these today at the liquor store, like two hours ago. Brand I mean, new. So I had to buy the Doers Twelve to go with the Doers Twelve. I had to pick up the J and B to go with the J and B, and I had to pick up a Glenfiddich Twelve to go against the Glenfiddich Eight because this guy. You ain't gonna find it. You're not gonna find a Glenfiddich eight. So this is as close as we can get. Is it fair? I don't know. It'll be something we'll good to talk about. Yeah. Uh, and the cutty, we actually had a little cutty left over from uh, some some I know what we did. I don't know what we did. But anyway, I say we go through these things. Um, yep. One each, you know, comparing. So we're, gonna, we're gonna pull. Uh, here's the J and B. J and B to start. So we've got J and B new and J and B old. What do you see as far as color? The color is about the same. Uh, yeah, there's almost a greenish hue to them. It's weird. I think it's yeah, similar. Yeah. And to be expected, they're blends, and you they've got coloring. Yeah. I'm sure. So um, this is the old. You know, but they're, they're consistent over 40 years with our color. Mm -hmm. Good job, Amy. Yep. Um, the old is well. We just taste the old. Hit the all new. right, hit the new, buddy. Wow, it's like shut like, up, dude. <laughs> it's like new brass. I mean, it's. I'm telling you, this old J and B is very pleasant. Okay, enough. so these are completely different bottles. You would never call these the same. Let me give a quick taste of it. Double fist, man. I want one on each nostril. <laughs> That's the new. That's the new. Okay. So there's not much depth. The flavor is pretty shallow. Um, it, the, 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 the obvious, uh, admittedly, the palate isn't as bad as the nose on. Um, it, the palate just kind of washes away, disappears. It's a little grassy on the on the palate. It's just, it's a completely different whiskey. All right, so forty years ago, I'm a JB man. I'm a okay. JB man. Yeah, absolutely. I can tell you today, no way, <laughs> no play for that. Are you kidding me? I don't even want to drink it. No, take a sip. It's not it's it's not as bad as the nose. So with the nose on, let me do a little more work on the nose while you. So it's not turpentine, but there's there's a, a solvent kind of nose on it. There is almost um, it, fresh grass, whatever. The the nose is horrible. Okay, mm -hmm. the palate uh, on the palate, it's sweet. There's a little bit of pine or something in it. I don't know what that is, but it's it's nowhere the same at all. Completely and utterly different. Let me taste them and make sure they're that different on the. Cl clearly designed for a blend. The palate is actually better, but if you blend it with something, you, you lose the nose. It's actually a, a, a marginally okay whiskey. Let's okay, hit, let's hit the 12. Hang on, I want to swivel around, show you the difference in the bottles too, so you can see the backs are different. Hey, and, and the, and the I different. think the JB New is 40% ABV. Let's well, that's a good that. call. Let's verify that, right? 40, 40 ABV. So it's a little lower in ABV. Exactly. Nose was horrible. So we're moving on to Doers 12. These are both 12 years old. This is an age statement. Um, I would expect these to, if anything, to be the closest. Yeah, I mean, so what this are you is, looking at? On the so color? I'm on the news. The color. Ooh, new looks darker. Uh, it's comparable. Is that fair? Is that um, fair it's, it may be colored. It's probably colored, but the nose is, is real subtle. 
Mm. Um, it feels, it smells young. You smell a little bit of grain in there. It's forty percent, forty percent ABV, and this was forty percent, so they're the same. Now, I don't know if Doers has carried a twelve-year statement the entire time. Maybe they haven't. Maybe they did a twelve-year-old and then they quit it in the nineties, two thousand, and they came back in two thousand ten. I so I, I mean, we can't say that it's the same recipe yeah. at all. So the pineapple no. is very pleasant. It's real. It's malty. I'm not getting much fruit. I'm not getting any, you know, there's obviously no smoke or, but I'm not getting rich raisins or fruits or anything like that. But it's, it's, it's a light, nice light whiskey. Um, pleasant to drink. Nothing amazing, but it's not too bad. Nowhere near the pleasant nose of the old. I think okay. the old I didn't, is I didn't taste the, no, the no, I didn't nose. Taste the, the nose the two and tell me which one you prefer. Oh, I'm not trying to pick does have here. The old has raisins and things like that in it. It, it does. It, it's just so much more. You, I oh, mean, you don't, sweet. You don't want to take your nose out of it. Yeah, this is, this is just a basic malt whiskey. It's nothing much right. special. But the 12, the old 12 is much richer. <clears throat> to me, the doer's old nose, it blows the new one away night and day. I yes. mean... The, to me, there's nothing on the nose to the new after I smell the old. I would agree. Um, palette, that old is really, really fun. It's it good. Is. There's it's a good lot there. I'm glad we didn't uh, take the old, the new ones first. I'm glad we kind of with a fresh palette did the old, did the old ones, and then I bring it in the new ones. The new Doors Twelve is fine, guys. I, it's, I'm not saying it's bad. Not like the JB. Yeah. Um, uh, it's okay, but it's just amazing to me how much better the 40-year-old sitting in a bottle in someone's dank basement, yeah. you know. Uh, really, really good. It's got a lot more bed depth to it. So this is the one that's kind of not fair. I, I don't want to say it's not fair, but we're talking about a Glenfiddich 12 on the new shelf. Glenfiddich 8 Pure Malt um, from 40 years ago. So the old... Weird. The new smells young. Yeah. Again, it's, it's it's a little bit grassy, but that maybe just my nose. Waxy right now. note in there. Um, maybe a little buttery wax. I... Not on the new. Really? All right, talk to me, Goose. Mm. Um, the palate's pleasant. No, the it's new light. the new mm. smells much lighter. It is. It's uh, light. Uh, um. You know, like green fruit, like apple. I was just going to say a green apple. I yeah. really was, that's exactly what I was thinking. A little bit of green apple on the palate. So I'm going to compare it now to the old. So it has more, this has more lemon in it. Like lemongrass. The new on the palate, I mean, it's Glenfiddich, right? Mm -hmm. I hate to say it, guys, but you know, Glenfiddich's got a place in my heart. When we jumped in the deep end of the pool four years ago and <laughs> decided to start drinking scotch, when fitting, you know, found its way to the top of my heart really quick. I mean, I fell in love with the 15 Solera, the 18 Small Batch Reserve, and we've tried a plethora of them ever since. So that's Glenfiddich, absolutely. Yeah, this old yeah, one. The old Glenfiddich has, it, it has a little more character. I don't know. It's hard to describe, though. It's not, it's not amazingly complex either. But that's, again, that's an 8-year-old versus a 12. So you may have more barrel influence. We, the color, we didn't check the color. I don't even know if they even cared about that back then. Colors are that. comparable. I don't, you know. I don't. I don't see anywhere where they nowadays. If you don't put non-chill filtered, you know, natural coloring on it, people beat you up. Mm -hmm. mm. So I think that's. It tastes pretty light and airy. So. I still think the, the old, old one holds better. Holds more complexity here. It's it's heavier. It's it's there's more to it. All right, um, we're moving on to Cuddy. The Cuddy. The new Cuddy. Boy, there's not much on the nose, except a little... Uh, I get powdered sugar on the old one. Shoe polish? I'm not sure. Shoe polish and powdered <laughs> sugar. <laughs> what the hell are we Maybe talking Maybe we're about? a little better with this one. Where are we going Ooh, with it? Yeah, that doesn't have a great nose. So this is new Cuddy. Mm -hmm. Both 46? Hmm. New Cuddy's 40. All right, what is that flavor? It's um, it's, it's almost like a buttered popcorn, but like a artificial butter. It, it, there, so there's some sweetness and some you know pop, popcorn in there, but what are you talking about? The new one? Yeah. Yeah. I, it's not. It's not. I mean, it is natural. It's a, it's an all natural product, but I don't. It doesn't taste natural. I do get some burnt, like the bottom of a pan. Ooh, this burnt. Is butter. Now, so the old Cuddy is butter. 
I smell powdered sugar on it. I mean, it just smells sweet. Yeah, I've got like a butterscotch and sweetness compared to that. Mm. Got a much better mouthfeel, too. Yeah, the new Cuddy, there's not... There's just nothing to it. I mean, I, the old cutty kind of cuts, coats your palate, and it just rolls over. It's really nice. I'm not fond of the, the nose. It's not as bad as the nose on that J and B, but the um, the nose on the old one. Yeah. So this is this is I mean, bright. Just, now, mm. now, admittedly, we may have lost some of the brightness and the, the sharpness from the cutty. It's just been bottled for 40, 40 years, so it may have not changed as much as we think. But the new is really edgy, kind of on the on the nose. Hmm. If I have to make a conclusion here, I, I'm shocked that I'm saying it. Guys, the yep. the whiskey they were putting out 40 years ago, at least from this little demonstration, is hands down better than the whiskey they're putting out today. I, I mean, uh, every, on the nose every, of the The, the gun thick is probably the closest. But again, we're talking a twelve to an eight. So I mean, uh, and, and I'm and honestly, if I had to rank the new ones, I, the, the Dewar's twelve was it's acceptable, yeah. it's fine. Of course, the Glenfiddich twelve is okay. I, I, than JB, I can, yeah, cutting JB, I can honestly do without those. I, I mean, but on the old ones, I would drink every one. I want all four of them on the bar. I mean, it's really that night and day. I can't believe that that's how this shook out. I mean, I've had these sitting down in my basement now for six, seven, eight months. Some of them, and I'm didn't. Not expect this to happen. I really thought we were going to pour this and be like, okay, that's going in the toilet. Well, I would. I was afraid it was going to go south or something bad was going to happen with it that it just it just would lose any character. Shocked. You know, just just the all the the good flavor ingredients would react together and create some so super molecule that would. It, be it raises the question. Okay, so I, you guys, some of these can be found. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, these are not like super collectible items. You can find some of these yeah, at auctions exactly. or or here, there, and ever. They're worth it. They're they're actually they're, they they're, worth, they're the worth looking into. Yeah. But so it, it actually so, gives me hope too for some of the other higher end bottles. You see these old bottles and you're like, ah, dude, you just paid five thousand dollars. Well, it might be pretty. Yeah, maybe yeah. I don't think. So you know, if you, I w are each of these old ones worth a hundred hundred bucks? Yeah, I think they would be. So the reason I would say, I say that is because they're unique, and the the whiskey is way better than you would expect. From a from a, a J and B or it a is giving you a glimpse into whiskey forty years and ago. the whiskey that's, is it's got better mouthfeel it's got better depth of flavor I think that's crazy it, it is it's and, and theoretically they shouldn't age anymore in these glass bottles that's true and they're not I mean they don't by by according to the you know the rules of Scotch but I tell you what they're all four different and and all four better so I hope you guys have enjoyed this little trip to circa. Late 70s, early 80s. Early 80s, early um, 60s, yeah. We've had fun doing it. Really look forward to your guys' comments, questions if you got them. We try to answer these comments. You know, you can always find us on Facebook. You can find us a podcast. Yep. We do lives on Thursday nights. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe, the notification bell so you know when we do go live. If any of you have old whiskey that you've been hesitant to open, open it. It's worth it. These are common bottles. They're not that valuable. Try them. I, I impressed. Try them. So, um, which one are you going to pick to sign off? Uh, Doers 12 Old, I think. Go for it. Grab it, buddy. I'm going to go with the JB. Oh, <laughs> I'm so well, surprised. Man, that is so nice. All right. This, this was fun, man. Slash Bob. Thanks for watching, everybody.